Hello, good to see you. My name is Ankele Mulman and our website is cwowi.eu and it stands for Church Without Walls International. We are part of a worldwide network of house churches. You can go to our website, find a lot of information about that. Also another website, if you are uh, English speaking, which I understand you do, cwowi.org. You'll find a lot of articles and information about house church. But today, this teaching, I want to encourage you and I want to give you hope and comfort you. And I, it's not a teaching I felt led today to just read some scripture because oftentimes it's good just to read the word as it was written as Paul wrote it or others. So I felt read to read from you from um, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4 and 5. And you have to understand that um, Paul was there many times and he told them, of course, he told them about the coming of the Lord. And they understood from his teaching that Jesus, who was brought back from the dead by God, that he would rose again, that he would come again in triumph. And since Paul had left Thessalonica, however, several of the Thessalonians believers had died. So they wondered what would become of them. And they wondered since Christ had yet not returned. So Paul's response, when you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I will go there too. In verse 13, let's just read it. And I will leave, give a little bit of a commentary, but not too much. And I, Father, I pray that you open the eyes of our understanding, that you give revelation about your word, what you mean, Father. Thank you for that. Paul says to them, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep or those who died, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. So when someone dies in Christ, there is hope because you will see them again. Of course, there is sorrow, but not in the way that people sorrow uh, um, because they have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus meaning those who are dead in Christ. Paul does, however, say in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8, that when you are absent from the body, you are present with the Lord. But it's your spirit and uh, spirit and soul that are present with the Lord. Your body remains in the grave. That Your body is like a house that you live in. But the moment you die, you go up, your spirit and soul are present with the Lord. But your body is in the grave. So in verse 15, he says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain uh, until the coming of the Lord will by no mean precedes those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the triumph of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So he says, okay, those who are already asleep, they will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And the word caught up is a wonderful uh, um, um, word. Actually, in Greek, it is the word harpazo. And my Bible gives an explanation. It says, it suggests the exercise of a sudden force. It means a sneeze, a seized, snatched away, taken by force. And it describes the Holy Spirit's action in transferring Philip from one location to another in Acts 8, 39. So you go from one occasion to another, from being in the grave, from being here on the earth, on the earth or whatever, whether you're dead, your body lies in the ground, or whether you are still alive here in this body, you go from one location to the other to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. When you hear these words, they should give you comfort. You know, everything will be all right. You will be with the Lord forever. And then the next chapter, chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. But concerning the times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. And that's what many people say. You know, the Lord comes as a thief in the night. You never know when he's coming. But let us continue reading. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. Who are the they who say safe and peace? They, uh, who say peace and safety and sudden dis destruction, like sudden something they did not expect to happen? But go on. He says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. So he is saying those who do not expect him, who are not part of his kingdom, who are not born again. 
To him they say peace and safety, and it will be a sudden destruction, and they shall not escape. And he said, but you, you got you, bread. And he's talking to the Thessalonians, and he's also talking, they're talking to you and me, because you are one, a part of the family of God. You are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. What does a thief do? A thief comes by night. You do not expect him. He takes something what is yours. So for the world, it will seem as if the Lord is taking people away and is stealing from them. But, for, you know, it's not true because we belong to him. He's just taking what belongs to him. Okay, he says, you all are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep or as others do, but let us watch and be sober meaning be self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint, appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Amazing. And therefore comfort each other, edify or build each other up just just as you are also doing so this letter was a letter of comfort to the thessalonians because some of them had already slept uh, had died and they wondered will they be with the lord so when the lord comes back they will be first and we will will follow after them and meet the lord in the air we will be snatched away but the day will not be, uh, come to us as a thief in the night it will not happen unexpectedly. We are awaiting his coming. Uh, as, uh, where is it? As Paul, uh, uh, I believe it's Paul, he says in Hebrews 9, 28, uh, he says, Christ was offered, one, was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. Apart from sin for salvation, he will save you. He will save that body, take it out of the grave or wherever it is. How he does it, I don't know. He will even save that body and it will be a glorified body and body, soul and spirit will be re reunited. Amazing. And we will be with the Lord forever. So no matter what happens this year, know that you can be at peace. Know that you are his. Know that you are a son or a daughter of light. And things should not overtake you. But be sober. Be self-controlled. Control yourself. Do not go to every everything that you see on YouTube or, or, or whatever that gives, um, uh, that, that, that makes, uh, how do you say that, that unsettles you. But stay with the words of the Bible. That's what Paul is saying to the Corinthians, to the Thessalonians. I taught you the, these things over and over again. And stay with it. Follow my example and stay with the sound doctrine and the word of God. And you will be at peace. So a word of comfort for you. I hope it did. See you next time. Bye-bye.